The work here is like a magic mix of four different works that I've made over the last two years. And I've tried to make a new work by using it like a toolbox. But essentially, all the works are about the language of objects and the way objects fall together or collide together in a weird way. So there's uh, wooden sculptures which are uh, hand carved from different woods and they're called The Way Things Collide. And they document two objects that I would find to be uh, cognitively different to each other. So like it's the, it's the human brain always tries to make connections and associations between things. So I pick two things that are almost opposites to try and um, cheat that instinct. And do you expect people to to draw connections when they're looking at them? Um, I think whatever you give to people, they'll always draw a connection between it. That's just part of the human condition, I think. Uh, so this one, this one here is um, a packing crate for a painting with a pig's snout on it, which is, it's called uh, packing crate meat collides with muso, which is snout, I think, in French. And then over here, there's an ice cream container, like you get Wall's ice cream in, um, with a draftsman's paperweight on top. And then over there, there's a tampon on the seat of a Toyota Prius. It would be kind of interesting to have, like, little slips of paper where people put down their responses and yeah, their own, yeah. Behind me is um, the wallpapers are actually documentary photographs from in my studio in Suffolk um, so it just it shows me in the process of conceiving of works and on the on the wall in the studio there's lots of A4 sheets of paper and there's I guess they're like ideas or starting points for works and that's the way that I work really by putting everything up on the wall and trying to work it out it's really hard to explain how you work it out but it's just by being surrounded by all this stimuli in the way. And then the framed works, they're taken from a book I wrote last year, which is about 66 objects. So in each framed work, there's photographs of objects that I've made and essays about them, about why they're phenomenal to me in my thinking. Um, so it's a bit like a, this layering of all these different works that I've put together. Are they, the essays on the wall, are they factual or have you made them up? Like, so the vajazzle thing, is that actually, is that the, real? The essays, uh, yeah, well, I wrote them on a dictaphone in the car. So when I commute, I write and then transcribe it. So they're kind of conversational and they all take different sort of approaches. One might be, like amateur philosophy and one might be a uh, text about economics but they all relate to, to the objects that are in the frame with them. I'm really into making collections of stuff at the moment. So the, this, these things are three of a collection of 66 objects that's called ampersand and then uh, I've just finished another collection that's called fieldwork which is another 66 objects and they're, it's a bit like there's a lot of collections in the art world, private collections, museum collections, and I think it's quite instinctive that humans do collect. So, and also I have too many ideas, so it's kind of nice to make one work that I can squash 66 things into. It's like exercise in my mind. Is there a significance to 66? 66 is the length of the conveyor belt that they run on, so you see them through a window. They go past like the generation game. Oh. So you can't choose um, how long you spend with them. So ones that you're not interested in, you have to put up with, and the ones that you want to spend more time with, they're gone before, you, before you've realized it. And is the film work yours as well? Yeah, the, the video is, it's a work I made last year. I think it was last year. And I wrote a children's book about 15 years ago about the Hungarian architect Erno Goldfinger and he built Willow Road in Hampstead, it was his house and he built Trellick Tower, everyone knows Trellick. Um, so it's, the, it's a reenactment or a reading of the children's book for radio, so it's a radio play, the children's book adapted into a radio play 
Um, and the, the guys that are with the voiceover artists are Foley artists and they make the, the sound effects. Um, so usually you'd never see this. It's, the, it's like the, this distinction between what you see and what you hear and the information that you're given. So obviously like when you watch TV, you, the TV only takes up this much of your vision of the space, but the sound is everywhere and you can't block it out. Um, so it sort of plays with that and the idea of seeing sound rather than hearing sound. Um, but it's, it's like an audition, it, it's, it's the first time they did it and we did it in one take, so they stop a lot in it and realise they've messed up. So it's, you see the whole process of this tr the, the, them trying to reenact these sounds with objects. But I think what I'm interested in this, in relation to this, is this object hood of things. So you have like a Toyota Prius seat, and then you might have a mop which makes a sound of a pigeon, flop, flop, flop. And then you have an obscene stereo uh, from the 80s that's, that's the aesthetics of which are purposefully aggressive. So it, the whole thing's about this, the life of objects in a way, and the history of objects.